Hello, beautiful people. I just am here to creator and writer of the Honesty Sis newsletter, a bi-weekly newsletter gives towards millennials who are truly trying to get their shit together. And I am back for another daily motivational video where we use this hero to become the alchemist of our lives and they teach us how to become spiritual beings. A little bit about me. I do not just use the tarot. I use gotten cusses in the same sentence and I may mispronounce some things, but if it does not stop shouting man to God, it will not stop me. So guys, I want to apologize. <laughs> Uh, for not, well, I guess I get y'all had some videos last week, but not fully, they're not, it wasn't, you know, as much as I would have liked. Um, I just got back from out of town, engine number 37, and so it's like, I'm still trying to get into my groove of things. So, um, I'm not gonna waste too much time. Let's just go ahead and get right into it. Dear God, Guardian Angels, and Ancestors, we come here as humbly as we know how. Just say thank you. Thank you, God, Guardian Angels, for blessing us this day. Um, and please allow us to know anything that you're being worried about this time. I got my phone. I should. Alright, and we want two cards, please. I got one that flew out. And then just give us one more. One more. And again, it's two more. So, that's cool. And discernment is peeking up at us. So, I have a, um, I have a feeling that discernment is going to be very, very, very important. Very, very important moving forward. Um, if you're not... Uh, sure what discernment means discernment is just being aware of the choices that you make um, using your discernment so a good example of this is just use your discernment when you take when you're listening to youtube readers like if you listen to somebody um, that makes you feel like anxious that makes you feel a little uneasy then instead of continuing to listen to that person to to continue to take on those feelings use your discernment and like turn it off okay so the card that popped right out is acceptance, angel number 151, gratitude and understanding. And right away, I'm getting this energy along with the discernment. I am going to take that just because I feel like this is important. And so um, it's so funny because I actually bought out, I finally got my book back, y'all. I have my conversation and conversation with God's book. And it's so funny because this morning I was actually reading something along those lines of, um, it was talking about, you know, um, wanting to go after your dreams, wanting to, you know, I'm not even going to get into it because that may come out in a message. Um, and I'll save that for the end. Um, but right away I'm getting the message about this acceptance, gratitude, understanding and, and um, discernment is that God wants you. And we actually had this message come out. Maybe, um, it was a full moon reading or maybe it was a new moon, but we definitely talked about this, the power of self-acceptance, the power of accepting yourself. Um, I feel like a lot of us, a lot of the uneasy, the, the, the discontentment come in is when we're not aware of ourselves. We're not aware of what we really want. Um, and that's actually what I was reading in the book. And it was saying that when you know who you are, and who you want to be and which direction you want to go in. It's very easy to use discernment because if you are aware that you are a child of God and that, say, for example, for me, I want to be a writer. I want to be a creator. I want to change my, my career. And so anything I'm going to do or anything that's going to take me off that path, I'm going to use my discernment and say, no, I'm not trying to get off that path. I want to stay on this direction. And so that's why self-acceptance is so important, angel number 333, because so once you can fully accept yourself, and I talked about this when I went down to Miami, it's you, you're no longer chasing bullshit. You're no longer, um, you know, doing things to put, you know, doing things and putting yourself in certain environments because that's what you're expected to do. So like, say, for example, um, when you go to Miami, everybody say, oh, Miami, you know, you're supposed to be partying. You're supposed to be, you know, having a time in your life, all of this stuff. But if you know who you are, if you know you're not a big partier, you know you're not about that life, then you use your discernment and you make that trip what you want to do. So I went down to Miami and we went to like a bar and stuff, but we wasn't partying. And it actually ended up being a great trip because... I know who I am. I know I'm the type of person that just like to chill, that's like to smoke, like to drink, and that's it. And like, I'm good. Like, I don't really need to do a whole bunch of extra. I love to sit on the beach. I like to read my book. Like, I'm just a very simple person. And I realized that when you know who you are, I'm going to repeat it, you don't chase the bullshit. You don't, you know, we do so many things trying to impress certain people. You know, you you wear, you know, you wear your hair a certain way because you want to get compliments. Angel number 444. You wear certain type of nails because that's what everybody's wearing. But if you know who you are, 
then you don't do things that are not in alignment with who you are. You use your discernment at all times. And I think a lot of times we get in trouble when we don't know who we are. Um, the other card that came out is gratitude and understanding. Um, and I feel like what God is saying is that when you accept who you are, you will have gratitude for everything that you've been through. Because a lot of the stuff that we've been through, engine number 512, helped make us who we are. And so you realize that, you know, like for me, I spent my whole life chasing, trying to fit in, trying to, you know, do everything to be a part of the crowd. And then it got to a point where I went so far left that I didn't even know who the fuck I was. I didn't know what my hopes and dreams were or any of that. And slowly but surely, God helped me isolate myself so that I can have time to understand myself, to know what I want, to really get, get to the nitty gritty so that I can be able to make decision, informed decisions. Angel number 551, because that's the problem. When you when you don't take that time to get to know yourself, when you're moving in this world, you're just moving loosey-goosey. So that's why you can make, you, you can get yourself in fucked up situations. You can get yourself, um, you know, caught up in stuff because you're not aware of who you are or even what you're living for. Um, I was, I remember I was listening to a Jennifer... Um, a Jennifer Hudson, no, 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 Jennifer Lewis. I was listening to Jennifer Lewis. Um, and she was just talking about like how, you know, she's always kind of been, you know, she always knew that she wanted to be an actress, but she always was like, kind of like loose, you know, like a little bit, you know, like just not loose, but she was free. You know, she's always been a sexually empowered woman. Um, and she realized, she was like, you know, what really kept me in check to not go too crazy or not to put myself out there was that. I knew that I wanted to be an actress. I knew that I had this reputation to, pro to protect, so I didn't do certain things. And so that goes right back down to the discernment and the power of accepting yourself and knowing yourself because it's going to protect you later on down the line. So like, say, for example, for me, let's bring this more in practical terms. I know that I, I, know, I know that I'm trying to finish my book up this year. That's my goal. That's my practice. That's what I'm trying to do for the year. And so it wouldn't really... If somebody would approach me and be like, hey, um, I have this amazing job for you making six figures, um, you know, it, it's just like your project accounting job um, and, you know, you can move up the ladder, blah, 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 blah. And I would say, I would literally think about it and I would probably say yes or no. Like, is this going, my, my discernment on if I would take that job or not would be, okay, is this going to help me get closer and closer to be, to, to finishing a book? Because remember, that's the ultimate goal, goal, uh, goal. I'm here to be a writer. I'm here to be, do this. So it's like everything I'm doing needs to be complimentary to that. And so if I talk to them and they're like, oh no, you're going to be required to, you know, travel at least 50% of the time. Um, you're going to be responsible for 30 other people. You're going to be running this department and while all that sounds amazing that's not in alignment with who the fuck I'm trying to be and so I don't take that job I don't go after those opportunities and to, to, to really make you understand this um, as much as I you know I don't like my job I'm not happy I, you know all of, all of these things I tell myself every day it's not like I'm just saying I don't like my job and I'm not working towards it every single day I'm working towards trying to get myself out the job 835 and so 830 yeah 835 and so it's like the discernment for me is I'm not going to move unless it makes sense with where I'm trying to go so that's why I'm not applying for leaving another company because what I realize is that at the end of the day all corporate, all corporate companies are the same. They all structured the same. They're all on these, these fucked up power structures and I don't like them. I don't want to work in it. And so why would I leave one environment to go to another just to be a little bit comfortable, but know that eventually two or three years down the line, I'm going to be in the same place. Angel number 909. No, I'm going to sit here. I'm going to be uncomfortable. I'm going to structure my day in such a way that I have gratitude and that I understand where I'm working towards. You hear what I'm, you hear what I'm going Going. Do you see what I'm saying with this? I just feel like this message, and I'm gonna get I'm gonna go to the cards, is here because God wants you to understand that this is I, I really feel like this is what it's about. A lot of us have dreams about what we want to do and who we want to be. 
and you just expect God to just come in and shake your fucking life up and like just bless you out of nowhere. But you have to understand that that's not how God works. God is not the, the decider. God, God don't do that. God created you for that. You are literally God representative, right? We say it so much that we forget it. You are God. You are the God. You are the one who create the tone. And so what God is saying is that from this moment on, look at this. This says acceptance. You're walking through a door. And from this moment on, if you say, okay, I know I'm a child of God. I know that God has me down here to do certain things. And so I'm going to walk through that door of fully accepting that I'm a, a child of God. I'm going to have gratitude for anything that may come my way because I know that it's ultimately leading me closer and closer to who I truly want to be. And so I'm going to do, I'm going to navigate this. I'm going to navigate this life journey with the understanding that I have to make decisions that are in accordance with who I'm ultimately trying to be. If I do that, then I know I will eventually get closer and closer to my dreams. Do you hear what I'm saying? I hope you caught that. I'm going to stop. It's 10.50. I want to keep us under 20. All right, guys. Clarify this message of acceptance, gratitude, understanding, and discernment. What are you trying to get us to understand about? About the power of acceptance what do you want us to understand about using our discernment as we navigate this journey of life allow no room for doubt or confusion in my name i pray i shame i just realized i have not smoked no weed today <laughs> that's really good i normally i'm like a uh, wake and bake i have not smoked any marijuana today that's very good yes i love this okay perfect yes 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 and so um, the first card that came up under acceptance is the hangman. And so I feel like this actually came out reverse. And so what I feel like is a lot of you guys have been in this. You, you've been in, if you've been listening to my channel for a while, you've been in this place where you have been examining your life. You took that pause. You, you took that pause, you, you put yourself, you allowed yourself to kind of go into your spiritual cocoon to try to figure out like, okay, so how have I got to this place? What have I done? Da, 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 da. Like you've done all that. And so God is saying now that you have that information of how you got into the position. And if you haven't, this is the first thing you need to do is figure out how you got to where you are right now. That's your first step. Okay, I'm here. I want to be there. But first, I got to figure out how the hell I got here. Okay, that's just the thing. You figure that out. You figure it out. Okay, I didn't love myself. I didn't trust myself. I didn't believe in myself. And that's how I ended up in this current position. Now that I do love myself, now that I do trust myself, now that I do believe in myself, I am going to take myself off of this hangman position and I am going to begin to walk into that. Walk in the power of I believe in myself. Walk in that power of love. Walk in that power of I ultimately know who I am, who I'm supposed to be. Angel number 1244. When you do that, God is saying that there's going to be this, this energy of this ten of coins. We, we see this ten of coins. It's beautiful. We see partnership. We see a child. We see a dog. We see coins everywhere. What does this say to you? Ultimate fulfillment. Because once you accept yourself, once you know yourself, you know that everything that you have, even your struggles, it's ultimately going to give you or it's going to bless you. I think about all the stuff that I've been through and I know without a doubt that those are going to be in screenplays. Those are going to be in movies. So that like my trials, my tribulations are going to help me be abundant in my life. And that's what God wants you to understand. That's the true acceptance. True self-acceptance is when you can look at your life and say, I wouldn't take a goddamn thing from it. I wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't change my parents leaving me. I Honestly, I am at that point where there is nothing in my journey that I would change because every single thing even the really really fucked up shit it really taught me how to trust myself how to accept myself and i'm going to tell you guys a very personal story um and i don't even know why this is coming up so i i, I just hope that this is for somebody engine number 1357 um when i was in my junior year of college i got pregnant and it wasn't like it, it, it wasn't like it was unexpected um, because it's like I was talking about it, but it's like, you know, you really don't when you're young, you're really not trying to get pregnant. You just, you know, you just say it. Um, but I literally had I, I remember so distinctly. That I like when I got back in the car because it was like a spring break or whatever. When I got back in the car with my friends, I was like, "Yeah, I'm pretty sure I just got pregnant this weekend." Like I just knew, like instantly, I knew I was pregnant. 
Um, and then a, a month or two later, I ended up, you know, getting pregnant, like, you know, confirming it. My cycle didn't come, all of that stuff. Um, but unfortunately, at that same time, my grandmother was passing away. Um, me and a dude, we weren't really talking. We wasn't really, like, vibing anymore. Um, and so I, of course, had to, you know, make this decision. And at first, my mom was just, you know, I got your back. We'll figure it out. We did da 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 um, and so I was really kind of going with the belief that, you know, at first I want it, this is the thing. It was like, I knew that I didn't want to have an abortion, but I also was afraid to have this child. I was also very, very afraid to have this child of my own. And so I was waiting for somebody to say something, you know, I was waiting for somebody to be like, no, don't do this. No, you know, like, no, we'll figure it out. Um, and what happened was eventually, you know, me and the guy, you know, we were, we were, we were arguing at number 12, uh, 15, 15, 45. Um, and I knew it wasn't going to be a good situation, but again, I'm like, I, I don't know. I felt attached to the child and I really didn't want to get rid of it. And so I called my mom, uh, mind you, she was very aware of this the whole time. I called my mom and I was just like, you know, I don't want to do this. Like, I'm scared. I think I just want to, you know, just see it through, have the baby, figure it out. And my mama went the fuck off on me. Like, she went off on me. Um, She told me she wouldn't help me. She told me that if I had this baby, I would be out on my own. Like, you know, just like, like all of my worst fears, everything that I was feeling, she said it. And I felt like I had no choice. I felt like, well, you know, I'm graduating next year. Like, I, I'm supposed to go back to school. I don't have a house. I don't have a job. I don't have anything. Um, my mom is not about to help me. And so I felt like I had to get the abortion. Like, I felt like there was just no way around it. And so I went through with it. I went to the place. And it was like the whole time that I was there, I was like waiting for somebody. Like, you know, I wish it was like, you know, there was no protesters outside the thing. Like, you know how they have in the movies. Nobody was protesting. The Nobody at the, at the counter with the check-in was like, are you sure you want to do this? Like, it was none of those type of conversations. Like, every time I thought, like, somebody would come out and be like, hey, are you sure you want to do this? That just didn't happen. So, I went through with it, even though I was scared and I didn't want to do it. I did it. And then, like, as soon as it was over, like, I cried so, 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 so hard. Like, I just, like, literally balled up in a ball and just cried because I felt like a failure. I felt like I let my child down. I felt like I wasn't brave. I felt like I wasn't strong. And the list goes on. And I tell you that story because from that moment on, I decided like that was the worst shit that could have ever happened to me. Like to, to me, I, you know, I know people have abortions all the time, but for me, that was the worst shit that could have ever happened to me. And I realized that though I, I, I did that decision because my mom said she wouldn't help me, the trauma, the pain that happened from my body. I was in that room by myself. I spent that whole summer depressed by myself. Like, it's my life. And it was like, it took for something so dramatic, so, you know, life, you know, like, just really, like, that 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 was really a turning point. I'm not, I'm not even going to lie, lie to you guys, but that was the beginning of my awakening period because I realized, I'm like, this is not her fucking life. Like, I up until that point, I was living my life for my mom. And I feel like that was the beginning of me just realizing, like, maybe this bitch don't know what's best. <laughs> like, maybe she don't know what's best for me. Um, and so I tell you that story to just help you understand that, you know, even though that is, a, it's such a traumatic thing that happens. I don't even want to say traumatic. It was, it was just a thing, a very bad thing to me that happened to me. Um, but I learned and I grew from that. And I, though I carry so much guilt because I, you know, killed my child. Um, I also know that she's also a part of my spirit team now because like whenever I was getting spiritual work in January 1919 it would just be like you know she's fine like I've, I've heard I've heard from her like I, I you know I forgive you it's fine like I, I understand and I feel like the reason why she could forgive me is because 
I didn't just allow that situation to happen in my life and keep doing it over and over and have three, four, five, six other abortions. Like, it's like that shit happened. And it was really a light bulb moment for me to be like, bitch, you only got one life. This is your body. You cannot be living it for your mom. And it was like, even though I was already in that momentum of, you know, going to get an accounting, being all, it's like, I felt like I was already on that track, but I, I had that awareness that this is my life. Like I have to make decisions for me. And so I say all that to say that though it was such a traumatic thing, though I hate that, you know, I even had to, you know, go through that. It also, it taught me so much. And so that's why I have gratitude for it. That's why I wouldn't take it away. That's why I wouldn't take it back because I, I know where I was at that place. I was scared. I was fearful. I was living for everybody but me. But from that moment on, things changed. Let me hurry up. Um, for the two of, uh, for understanding what came out is the two of staffs. And this is so, oh my God, this is actually a really beautiful message because what God is saying is that, you know, you've been in this hangman position for a very, very long time. And that's just, you've been in this period of pause. You've been thinking about your life. You've been contemplating things. And what God is saying is, um, this, this whole period was so you to have, for you to have gratitude about your past and for you to also have this understanding and this awareness moving forward. And also I feel like God is saying you're at this point and you've been at this point for some time where it's time for you to make a decision. Are you going to continue to keep being the same person that you've been for the last five or 10 years? Or are you going to take that chance to see how much differently your life could be? Um, this came out reverse. And so what I feel like is God is saying, because you did that process of learning yourself, understanding yourself, figuring out how you got to this position, now you have gratitude for your past. You can easily move forward on your journey. Um, you can easily move forward on your journey towards your happily ever after. And God is going to easily give it to you if you use discernment. Because this Ace of Wands, it also came out reverse under discernment. And that's what God is trying to get you to understand. You can stay at this thin still forever. You can refuse to move forward. But what God is saying is that now that you've done this process to understand yourself, to understand your past, now you need to make that decision to actually step on your past, use your discernment. And if you use your discernment, then God will give you a brand new start. We have this Ace of Swords. Ace of Swords is talking about a brand new way to communicate, a brand new way to move in the world. And this came out under discernment. And so it goes all the way back to the beginning of the message and what I was telling you guys about you know, when you know who you are, you don't chase certain things. You move differently. You speak differently. And when you do that, you have this different type of energy that you emit to the universe. When you have that energy of total acceptance, total gratitude, total, you know, you just feel confident in who you are and where you're going, then that's when God can bring you your tribe. That's where God can bring you the people who are just like you and you can move forward to your destiny, not having to do it alone. You have to realize that God is never going to have you do anything alone. God is never going to have you do anything that you don't want to do. That's why it's so important for you to get to know yourself, okay? All right, I'm actually going to leave that message right there because I felt like it was just... It was beautiful. <laughs> I personally really, really love that message. I'm actually going to go ahead and this card kind of flew out. Welcome to planet earth. You are here to see joy. And that's just doubling down on what I said. A God is never going to have you do anything that you don't want to do. Everything that God has for you, it's in full alignment with you and you're going to enjoy doing it. You may not enjoy all parts of it. Let's get that out of our head. But you should genuinely enjoy the direction that you're going in. Okay, God, clarify this. Just give us one tool to wrap this one up. Clarify this message of acceptance, gratitude, discernment, and understanding with the hangman, the ten of one. I mean, the ten of coins, the two of staffs, and the ace of swords. What are you trying to get us to understand about the power of acceptance? What do you want to get us to understand how acceptance helped us easily navigate navigate life and discernment? This card wants to come out. So the card that we're going to focus on is I can always tell a different financial abundance story. What anyone else has or does not have has nothing to do with you. The only thing that affects your physical experience is the way you utilize the non-physical energy with your thoughts. So let's pause. Remember, I was saying from here, when you make that decision to go in the direction of your dreams, you use your discernment, you start speaking and moving differently, then God brings in your tribe. You miss because you have this different type of energy. This, this car is clarifying that. 
Um, your abundance or lack of it in your experience has nothing to do with anybody else is doing or having. So that goes back to that power of acceptance. A lot of us feels like, oh, because I, you know, my parents didn't love me or because I grew up in Detroit or because I grew up poor or because I grew up, you know, an immigrant. I don't have the power to live out my dreams. And that's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie that society put on you. That's why God is saying it's so important to really know who you are. Who's ya? Not even who you are. Who's ya? Okay, you are God. I just, I, I, you know, at this point, I'm not about to keep me like. I'm not going to feel ashamed for saying that. You are fucking God. Okay, like you are literally God representative. Take that in. Put this in your mind. I want you to, this is what I want you to do. Whenever you find yourself feeling a moment of doubt or feeling a moment of weakness, we, we used to have these little bracelets when we was in school. What would God do? If you were truly a child of God, if you truly had the power of God within you, and you this, this is why this is going to be a practice exercise. If you truly believe you have the power of God within you, make a decision from that standpoint. Don't allow fear. Remember last year I told y'all, I told y'all how blessed I was when I just stopped moving in fear because God don't know, no, you know, God don't know fear. So my thing is, if you're making a decision in fear, I want you to check yourself and ask yourself, what will God do in this instant? I don't want you to think about your earthly mind. I don't want you to think about what you can do. I want you to think about what God could do. And then I want you to remind yourself that you are his fucking representative, that you are a child of God. Just like you a child of your parents, don't you, that doesn't mean you have certain characteristics you have certain features, you talk like them, you move, you have certain mannerisms from your parents. Same shit going on to our earthly <laughs> Same shit happening to God. You are a child of God. Take that in. As a matter of fact, let's take the child. You are God. You are God. Take that in. They don't want us to know that. Because if everybody walked around this bitch like they was God, then who the hell gonna be a slave? Angel number 2650. All right, let's finish this up. Your lack of abundance or in the lack, your abundance or lack of it in your experience has nothing to do with anybody else is doing or having. It only has to do with your perspective. So that's why God had you take that moment of pause. It only has to do with your offering of thought. That's why God wants you to have gratitude for your past. If you want your fortunes to shift, you have to t begin by telling yourself a different story. The different story that I tell myself constantly is that even though these people get on my goddamn nerves, even though these people are, you know, really testing me, I know this is not my end all be all because God only wants the best for me. I say myself, telling myself every time, even though I know that I'm frustrated, even though I know that this job is fucking driving me crazy, I know this is just a phase, this is just a moment of time, and it will not get the best of me. You have to speak that shit to yourself. Because I feel like so many of us, we get into these jobs and we think, this is how my life gonna always be. It's No, fuck that. Jesus ain't down on the cross for this shit, for us to be in this bitch suffering and all. No, fuck that. And I love this. God is ending this message with saying, I can earn a living doing what I love to do. My second favorite card in this whole thing. There's no better way to earn money than to do the things you love to do. Money can flow into your experience through endless avenues. It is not the choice of crap that limit the money that flows, but only your attitude towards the money. And I have a... Um, if you really want to start working on your abundant mindset, you really want to start worrying about your thoughts, I have an article on Honestly Sis called You Are Not Your Thoughts. Appreciation and gratitude are different vibrational states. Remember this card of gratitude came, gratitude came out. Uh, gratitude is the ultimate currency. I do want to read this. When you feel gratitude, often you are looking at a difficulty that you have overcome, but there is still some of the struggle vibration pattern uh, present. But the state of appreciation is seeing whatever you're looking at through the eyes of source. So remember, I was telling you back here about your past. Yes, have gratitude for it. But they were saying with the gratitude, you may still have a little bit of struggle energy in there. So that's why God is just saying, fully appreciate it. Say you wouldn't take nothing from your journey. You love it exactly how it is. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead. I'm actually going to end this message with a... Um, we're going to go into our conversations with God and I'm just going to show, I'm going to show you guys how I do this. Here we go right here. And I'm literally just going to open it up to this right here. 
Oh, look, and I hope this is what I thought it is. <laughs> I hope it's what I want it to be. Um, and you can also do this with the Bible. Just like how we pull cards and stuff, you can just open your Bible, read a verse, and nine times out of ten, I bet you it'll be the verse that you need to read. I do this all the time with this book. Um, I probably need to go ahead and take this, take the, maybe towards the end of the fall, I'll do that. Just read the book in its entirety. But, okay, I'm going to lead you guys with this thought. Okay, what did you mean I'm unhappy with my, y'all? God! It's Jesus watching me! Station <laughs> number 303. I love God. This is exactly what I want it to be. So here we go. Okay. What did you mean I'm unhappy with my money situation because I'm unhappy with my money situation? You are what you think. It is a vicious cycle. When the thought is a negative one, you've got to find a way to break out of the circle. Let's pause. A lot of you guys have been in a very negative cycle. A very negative thought pattern. And so that's why God had you in this pause. That's why God had you in these moments of isolation. And instead of fighting it, he wants you to just embrace that shit. Because when you can, then you're able to break the thought patterns, break these cycles that you're so normally used to. So much of your present experience is based on your previous thought. Thought leads to experience, which leads to thought, which leads to experience. This can produce constant joy when the sponsoring thought is joyous. It can and does produce continual hell when the sponsoring thought is helitious. The trick is to change that sponsoring thought. I was about to illustrate how to do that. Go. Thank you. The first thing to do is to reverse the thought word deed diagram. Do you remember the old age think before you act? Yes. Well, forget it. If you want to change a root thought, you have to act before you think it. Remember, I was telling y'all back here. A lot of y'all, you have been just waiting, waiting, waiting for God to just come in your life, make a change. And that's not how God fucking works. God works in action. God don't live in your motherfucking mind. God lives in energy. He lives in motion. And so if you really genuinely wants to change your life, then guess what you got to do? Get off your ass and start walking towards it, using your discernment. And when you do, and, when, and the way that you're going to know that you're moving in the right direction is that God is going to give you that bloop. God is going to be like, boop, something's going to just come out of nowhere. And it's going to be that, um, I, I think it was uh, Tabitha who says, was it Tabitha? I don't know. Somebody, one of these people I listen to says, a God, yes. When you make a change and then immediately you see a positive result, that's God telling you, yes, girl, keep going. As soon as I, um, I was going back and forth, I didn't know if I should do tarot. Should I do it? Should I not? Um, the first time, the first day I put that up, somebody immediately booked. God, yes. Yes, this is what you're supposed to do. Well, forget it. If you want to change a root thought, you have to act before you think. Example, you're walking down the street and come across an old lady begging for quarters. You realize she's a bag lady and is living day to day. You instantly know that as little money as you have, you surely have enough to share with her. Your first impulse is to give her some change. There's even a part of you that's ready to reach in your pocket for a little folding money, a one or even a five. What the heck? Make it a grand moment for her. Light her up. Then the thought comes in, where are you crazy? You've only got $7 to get us through the day. You want to give her five? So you start fumbling around for that one. Thought again, hey, hey, come on. You don't have to give that many of these away. You can just give them away. Give her some coins for heaven's sake. Let's get out of here. Quickly, you reach into your pocket to try to come up with some quarters. Your fingers feel only nickels and dimes. You're embarrassed. You Here you are, fully clothed, fully fed, and you're going to nickel and dime this poor woman who has nothing. You try in vain to find a quarter or two. Oh, there's one deep in the fold of your pockets, but by now you've walked past her smiling wanly and it's too late to go back. She gets nothing. You get nothing either. Instead of the joy of knowing your abundance and sharing, you now feel as poor as the woman. Why didn't you just give her the, the paper money? It was your first impulse but your thought got in the way. 
Next time, decide to act before you think. Give the money. Go ahead. You've got it. And there's more where there's coming from. That's the only thought which separates you from the bag lady. I'm going to say this again and I'm going to hurry up. Angel number 3434. Next time, next time, decide to act before you think. Give the money. Go ahead. You got it. And there's more where that's coming from. That's the only thought which separates you from the bag lady. You cl you're clear there's more where that's come from and she doesn't know that. When you want to change a root thought, act in accordance with the new idea you have. But you must act quickly or your mind will kill the idea before you know it. I mean that literally. The idea, the new truth will be dead in you before you had a chance to know it. So act quickly when the opportunity arises and if you do this, do this often, your mind will soon get the idea. It will be your new thought. Oh, I just thought of something. Is that what you meant by the new thought movement? If not, it should be. New thought is your only chance. It is your only real opportunity to evolve, to grow, to truly become who you really are. Your mind is right now filled with old thoughts. Not only old thoughts, but mostly someone else's old thoughts. It is important now, it is, it is time now to change your mind about some things. That is what evolution is all about. So I am going to leave you guys there. That is the end of the message. And I'm just going to say real quickly that I was going to, you know, I just came back from California and Vegas and my cousin, they already had this trip planned and there was a part of me that was like, I can't afford it. I can't do this. I'm doing too much. And I did that action of, you know what? No, fuck that. I'm going, I can afford it. More money will come in. This will work out. I know that God only wants the best for me. And guess what? Oh, and guess what? It actually ended up being exactly what it needed to be. So if you're ready to change your life, act before you think. All right, I said that's all the messages I have for you. If you made it to the end of this message, please give me a thumbs up. If you made it to the end of this message, you're not subscribed. What the fuck are you waiting for? Until we meet again, dream no straight. Never let the internet rush you and never, ever, ever let somebody tell you what you cannot do. Mwah, I see you soon. Bye.